Hey motherfuckers, it's me, Cole Yellowbird, with my first ever YouTube build video. I'm starting out with a pretty simple one. It's just a bending attachment for a hydraulic press. I'm strong, man. That thing weighs 12 tons. I stole that joke from Peppermint Andy. This is just a piece of steel I found in the ditch when I was working last summer. It's an excavator blade, I'm pretty sure. It's like seven eighths by four and a bit inches. All of my measurements, I'm kind of just deciding as I go. You'll see that I move some lines around just so I can utilize the hole for a slot. All of these pieces are just rusty as shit. I'm just laying out equally spaced lines in and down. I think it ended up being about 3 sixteenths of an inch but that'll end up giving me a 90 degree angle at the end. And I left an eighth of an inch in the middle for a nice little nose radius. You'll see that all this rust was an ongoing issue throughout this project. I'm just centering up that plate on, we'll call it the base of the hydraulic press. And then I use this 5 8 hot rolled steel to hold it in place. Again, rust being an issue. Yeah, you being a fucker. Why? I honestly probably should have just stick welded all this shit, but I finally got it. Now I didn't have the right angle iron, so I ended up having to cut some down, but it's always very important that you wear your PP, especially when running these saws. Eight mil, eight mil, and then 55, 54 and a half. Now I'm sure this will drive some of you crazy, but I ended up tacking these a little bit offset just so that that angle iron covered the holes. When you grind the rust. And when you don't grind the rust. Now I have both a big and a little chop saw, but I always go to this little one because it just runs off of seven inch zip cuts, which are way thinner than the big chop saw blades. Those big chop saws are just aggressive. Just deburring this piece on the lathe. I use the feeds and speeds calculator on Little Machine Shop, but you're about to see that I am not a machinist. Not in the slightest. I'm pretty sure this bolt came off the bump stop of the welding truck 
but whatever it is, I think it might be case hardened or something because it did not want a machine. And it's funny because the thought didn't even occur to me till after to just take it to the vise and cut it with a zip cut. Now I weld for a living, so I'm very comfortable holding on to stuff barehanded running a grinder, but if you're not, put it in a vise. I just square up the bolt by eye and then I level the bending plate or whatever to the actual machine itself. I'm not entirely sure how necessary that is as long as the plate and the base part are square or parallel to themselves. I think that's the only thing that really matters here. This is just some large pipe bolt up I got from a pipe fitter at work and I have the plate set up on parallels and then I have the spare nuts on the other end of the stud just to help align everything so I don't have to use a square or anything. Probably should have taken those out first, hey? And while you weren't looking, I painted it and I cut that one side off of the bottom to even them out. And here I am testing it. I pretty much immediately had to put the 20 ton bottle jack in it. But here I am setting the hard stop and this is two inch by quarter flat bar and it worked really well actually. I was very surprised by this whole thing. So Neil Pask from the Pask Makes YouTube channel has a giant fly press with an adjustable hard stop on it. So that was the inspiration for this project. I wanted some way to do large radius, repeatable bends in thicker material. So this is six inch by quarter, and I just have equally spaced square lines on it, and then I'm lining it up with the top little die. And I run it through until the hard stops hit, and overall this worked very well. And when you square it up like that, it actually keeps the, the plate from any twist or anything, you, you'll see that I put it on the floor here and there's no, no gaps or anything to be seen. And then with the hard stops all the way up, you can obviously bend 90 degree corners. And this is that two inch by quarter. And then I also put the six inch back in there and it bent it no problem too. And here's proof of just how lazy I am because I only painted the front half. Anyway. That's it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe or whatever.